this meant a lot to me because I watched The Proud Family. Did you, Hannah Claire? Yeah, we talked about this on IRL last night. Yeah, yeah. Um, they ran originally from 2001 to 2005, which is a much different time in our culture. Very and different time. Along with That's So Raven and, and some other shows, it was just a normal show that portrayed a normal black family just existing. And it was funny. It was lighthearted. Can't do that anymore. I enjoyed that and a lot of different shows, uh, animated shows on Disney at the time. And now they've rebooted it as of last year, calling it The Proud Family Louder and Prouder. And as soon as they reboot something, you know it's a bad sign. Oh, yeah. Because they can't come up with a new idea. But this time around, they've completely bastardized the show and turned it essentially into... Identity Politics 101 for Babies, who never were introduced to the first show in the first place. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's exemplified in this one new episode where uh, people have been sharing clips of this episode on Twitter a lot with the Mm -hmm. hashtag Boycott Disney. And essentially, it's showing the, the main characters learning about the history of Juneteenth. And they learned that, you know, the terrifying truth is that black Americans did not actually gain their freedoms after uh, the Emancipation Proclamation. They found out the terrifying truth that Abraham Lincoln did not want slaves to be free. And they learned that their own town was founded by a slave owner and they begin protesting. And so, they eventually get the, ta- the town named. It was Smithville and it gets changed. Yes, yeah, so it's yeah. after this, this guy, I think Christian A or H. Smith, yeah. I couldn't make it out in the clip, but so we can't show these clips because of copyright. Basically, one of them uh, has these characters who are aged about like 13, 14, 15, um, peacefully protesting by a monument of this slave owner, protesting get to get it taken down. Mm-hmm. And then riot police show up with shields to arrest them. And one of the characters dads is on the other side of the riot police saying they're gonna arrest our babies and he points to i think they're like mayor or some some white man who is present and he says you have to stop them use your white privilege for good yep. <laughs> and then in another clip they're talking to one of their school teachers about the history of juneteenth unveiling all husband. of these like this is the the it says that maya's what black is father is seen yelling at his white husband to do something with your white. oh privilege. yeah so i yeah. guess it's uh yep. his same sex partner that yeah. he's yelling at to use his white privilege look to... i'm the one who's out here all the time kind Jeez. of playing devil's advocate like look you know like uh, like uh, i mean i see it i see the propaganda but then like stuff like this and i'm like you guys make it yeah. really hard for me to take the middle ground here and then the worst clip of all is them performing this like (laughs) slam poetry kind of beatnik style uh monologue where they they repeat the line uh i think it was like this country is built on slavery and slaves built slave built this country slaves built this country so they go through all of this rewritten history together um and then at the end all of the adults in the room roar in applause for their historical inaccuracies. What's, what's weird to me is like 20 years ago, no, I guess that's longer than that now. It's like, that's how long I've been alive. Like I say 20 years ago, kind of like when people are like, oh, just remember that 1990 is closer now than 19, you know, when people do the thing. Feel like, old yeah, yet? Yeah, feel old yet. <laughs> but like, I, I remember a time when people looked down on edutainment. Like even even accurate edutainment was looked mm-hmm. down as uh, lo- was looked down on as like secondary uh, as like second class art, right? Now, in a way, like it, like kids didn't clamor for ed- to be educated with their art. They they clamored for good stories, mm-hmm. and it's like they don't even want to give you that option anymore. They don't even want to give you the option of just presenting the family. Uh, you know, going through some unique, uh, some unique experience to them that has nothing to do with race, gender, sexuality, or something that makes you hate this country. It also reminded me that last week I was looking, uh, they, they put up the trailer initially for the Hulu 1619 Project documentary. Yes. Right? And I'm just curious, right? It's the only thing on the Hulu Twitter with the comments turned off. Mm-hmm. The only one. 
because they understand that people push back against stuff like this. And it makes me wonder, yeah. like, I, I, I kind of complain a lot because I'm like, look, they made a lot of progress in society. Me, who, like, you were mentioned earlier that, like, what Elijah Schaefer posted something about saying that he feels truly politically homeless. And somebody like me, who does feel that way most of the time, who grew up extremely, you know, not extremely, grew up liberal and still ha holds many liberal ideals, looks at this stuff and thinks like, you gained so much traction for decades, after decade after decade, by just making it subtle. And they just, I, I don't know if they just forgot how to do that, if 2016 made it impossible for them to focus on doing that again, mm -hmm. or what it is, but I don't know if they're actually going to achieve what they're trying to achieve because you're losing people. I think all they saw with this is that it was an animated series that featured a black family and they didn't think yeah. about what it was before. I don't know about you, but one of my vivid memories from watching the show is seeing uh, a Muslim family. She does like an exchange where she stays with a Muslim family yeah. and the daughter stays with her and they ask her to fast and she wears a hijab to school and it sort of talks about the nuances of like taking on different culture and things like that. Uh, it was the first time I think I can remember as a kid seeing uh, a Muslim character definitely in an animated show, if not on TV, although I didn't watch a lot of TV growing up. Uh, I think that they saw this as an opportunity to co-opt a black family for what modern Hollywood believes the black family should be doing with their time. Yeah. And I don't know if that is actually fair. And I don't know if that uh, does. It doesn't do anything more than try to convince the viewers of today that this kind of activism mm -hmm. is cool and trendy and you know something you're supposed to be doing well, do what is, is the end result for this the natural consequence when a child is watching this who is not capable of seeing the nuance or the context or hasn't been taught history yet which is by design or hasn't no. been taught by their parents they're going to believe exactly what they're told That's and if it's a white child they're going to feel self-hatred and right. that i believe that is the desired result yeah. right i mean look at that scene where they're doing their like spoken word or whatever who's holding the sign that says america hasn't atoned yet the white kid yep. the one white mm -hmm. friend in that group i mean the it's obvious that this is an anti-white movement and on top of that it's to make it seem like at any age i mean you said these girls are like 12 13 14 yep. 15 whatever mm -hmm. i thought they were like 10 or 11 and that's how i remember the show being i don't really maybe know. they aged them up for the maybe reason. i have no idea but ultimately they want you to know that beginning in middle school high school if not earlier you are supposed to be actively involved in this this is the cool thing to be doing this is what your responsibility is regardless of your race is to push back against anything yeah. any of the foundational values of america or anything that comes up i mean we talked about this a little bit on irl last night but uh, presenting a history, I think we should present our history as with as much de detail and nuance as we can. But the idea that you would take down monuments and whatever yeah. else just tells us that they are not willing to talk about history. And if you can't talk about your history, how are you supposed to not repeat it? Right. Well, it was really uh, eye opening that a lot of these responses were oh, why are you afraid of kids learning history? Why is it that you think history is anti-white? That's, that's awfully telling. No, it's why are you afraid of kids learning history? Right. Yeah. I mean, this, this idea they say in here that Abraham Lincoln actually didn't free the slave, that's a new concept. I mean, people push the narrative that Abraham Lincoln was the great emancipator and he freed the slave all the way through the 1990s, early 2000s, and now we have come to a conclusion that he hasn't because there's evidence that he didn't believe that. He wrote to this journalist uh, mm -hmm. about six months, or you know, less than a year before the Emancipation Proclamation saying, if I could have kept the union together by freeing all of the slaves, I would have done it. If I could have done it by freeing no slaves, I would have done it. If I could have kept the union together by freeing half and keeping the other half enslaved, I would have done that too. His objection, his, his interest wasn't in slavery, it was in keeping the union intact. Yeah. And I so think it's, a narrative, my it's is, a, a narrative that got spun. Why it's a narrative we, completely. Yeah. And they uh, decided that we had to hold him up as a, having done the right thing. When actually that was, in yeah. fact, he was one of the presidents who advocated mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, we had to go through a reconstructionist era. He was one of the people who advocated for like, maybe we should set up uh, communities in Africa and send the, the descendants yep. of slaves and slaves to Africa to be reintegrated back into communities. Of course, that's kind of hard. You don't know where they're from in Africa. I, I accept that it's complicated there, but like we just completely wash that of Abraham Lincoln. We don't look at our history at all and think about what it meant to have slavery and what it meant to disassemble slavery. In fact, we are still to this day just saying it's 
one racial group's fault and they should they should pay for it yeah my question here is all of those historical facts aside why is it any of disney's business <laughs> to be the party that teaches the next yeah. generation about our nation's history it's simply not their place and it's a major overreach into the home that is entirely inappropriate and it should be pushed back but on. Th they see it as the same thing that they were doing in all the optical specials saying like, you shouldn't bully people and you should be nice yep. to people. All Even that these, was wrong in e my opinion. E all of these morals that they felt like they could present, like they're a TV show and they wanna talk to your children, but they're, they're sending good message. They're teaching kids good values. And after decades and decades of it being sort of social inter-school kind of stuff, now they are moving on to this idea that actually to be a good person you have to be deeply involved in social justice causes because the people that are now making the decisions there are activists yeah exactly. i remember like the way that messaging was done with disney back really when i was watching it in the 2000s i found it confusing even that they kept harping on the um individualist like that hyper individualist be yourself no matter what narrative and people should accept you no matter what narrative mm -hmm. yeah. and of course like the anti-bullying propaganda the which idea, i disagree with should the idea be not that everyone should accept you no matter what who you are it's that you should be okay even if uh, with yourself even if mm -hmm. nobody accepts yeah, you. yeah and that was a message that was never really authentically presented yeah. in entertainment by disney and it's just snowballed to the point where we've gotten to this this type of content. And then further, I saw clips from the show where they, uh, it was basically like an autism PSA because uh, the main character's younger brother, BB, was diagnosed with autism in the show. And they show him being like integrated into his like preschool or kindergarten class. After getting this diagnosis, they show um, his father initially reacting negatively to the diagnosis and all of this stuff entirely unrelated from like actual storytelling that I think any kids would be genuinely interested in. This is a PSA that is made for adults to circulate on social media and pat themselves on the back for. And that's all of the reception I saw about it. No one yeah. was like, my kid watched this and they found it so insightful that they said this about their their classmate who also has autism. They like nothing is actually coming to fruition in the real world because kids are watching these scenes. This is about clapter you from think, adults. Like I saw the, all of these tweets that were saying like, wow, it showed that um, this character on the autism spectrum is included in the family and I'm so touched by what they included in this show and they did such a beautiful job and they showed all these reactions from the family yeah. and they, they needed to address serious issues like this. But were any of the kids watching yeah, do you interested think this actually, in this? Do you think this actually reaches a youth audience? I, I don't think so. Like, I, I certainly hope there aren't yeah. numbers watching a show like this, especially since I doubt it's organic interest in the first place, given that it's a reboot of something yeah. that was think, popular for a different generation. I think the reality is, yes, it does reach a, yeah. a youth audience. I don't know what effect it has on a youth audience. I mean, remember that, like, we... I'm watching the show thinking, oh, I remember these characters and I remember enjoying the show and I remember it being So our opinions are already colored by... But I didn't grow up with the amount of uh, SJW programming in my animated TV series as kids today have, right? Like, it was definitely increasing when I was a kid, yeah. but it wasn't to the level. And so to some extent, like... Felt non-existent. We're all like, kid. how could they do this? Because these are familiar characters. Yeah. But I bet there are 12 other shows that do similar things. I mean, I bet the youth of today is... Mm -hmm more used to it than we are and in some ways yeah. I wonder if that makes them numb to it do you remember the ones well, see, that's what are, like, we're gonna react positively to it already did and the ones that are like yeah I don't care are already tuning it out it's, do you remember Kim Possible mm -hmm. and she has this male sidekick Ron Stoppable who is constantly the one making all of the blunders on their adventures together thank you which she has to correct mm -hmm. she is the smart capable competent one of their duo and at the same time he constantly is pining after her romantically yeah. and i mean he he gets her in the end but the whole point is that he is he is lesser than her of course. simply for being male and that was something that was just mainstream on like the animated shows i was watching on disney channel Th this has been a trickle down for so long from disney and weirdly enough 
these shows that had more subtle propaganda, they were mostly made by a lot of the same people that are in charge today for all of these Disney Plus shows. Like I looked into Bruce Smith, who is in charge of the animation for um, Proud Family's yeah. reboot. And he actually worked on um, Tarzan. He worked on the original Proud Family, obviously. He worked on Emperor's New Groove, Princess and the Frog, Winnie the Pooh, and I think Who Framed Roger Rabbit as well. Gosh, it's old. All of this old content that we, like, remember so fondly and we love so much because it isn't about messaging. It's just heartfelt, wholesome entertainment, it's made by the same person that is peddling the propaganda today. I don't understand why. I think there's a reason for that. I think that for the people that are creating it, yes, the activist who's writing it and the activist producer that's you know pushing for it to get made, they see it that way. The creatives that are actually doing the, the designing and everything, I think that there's a certain desensitization when you are creating something, right? Like, especially if it's not your creation. If you're just part of it, he's not seeing the propaganda. He's saying, look at this great bit of art I did here. Look at this great, you know, look at this great cut in this scene here. I think that there, for certain people at the creative level, if they're not emotionally attached to the artwork, they can detach in a way that we can't because we're emotionally like, like, okay, I've, I've edited videos for years, right? It, it, the idea is like, if you edit a video, like a skating video to a song, you never want to hear that song again by the time you're done because you've heard it for like literally for hours as you're cutting up stuff around it and you're cutting around the song, like you're sick of it. You It's just a tool at that point. And I think for a lot of the people that are creating stuff, it's just a job. Like they're not looking, first of all, they're not looking at it through the same lens we're looking at as people that are more politically aware, I would mm -hmm. assume are more politically aware. Uh, I think that they have a way of detaching from it that we don't. I don't know. They also pretend to be the people making the magic <laughs> of this kid's content. That's propaganda they, too. <laughs> they're, yeah, but they're peddling the propaganda yeah. that they are emotionally attached yeah. to the content and therefore... The ones who get it greenlit, yeah, absolutely. But I, the ones who the ones who are actually making it, mm -hmm. like the, the the artists, the 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 the, um, the storyboard artists, the the people drawing things, the people actually doing the digital animating, I don't know if they care. I, I think, think it's just a, a job. I think for a series like this, a reboot of an established TV show where you are mimicking the artwork that came before yeah. you. Yeah. The only way to feel like you are creating something new is to instill your morals into it. And that's and a big to problem. shape the characters. And yeah. that's that's how you get ownership. I mean, I wonder if you if you weren't allowed to do reboots, right? Yeah. And they had to draw original art and they had to come up with original characters and they had to do all kinds of things. It would probably still have these values. Yeah. But would it have it to this extent? Would we have this insistence, right? Because the only way that they can differentiate their version of the Proud Family from a previous version is to create this modernized yeah. uh, moral code. And then I'm contrasting all of this moralizing with their other decisions, like Disney's other decisions that show how inhuman they really are as a mega corporation as you would expect them to be for instance like filming mulan next to uyghur labor camps yeah and recently they dropped a simpsons episode yeah, in I hong kong yeah. because it made a joke including a reference to forced labor camps in china where child laborers uh make smartphones yep. and Disney has declined to comment on the situation. Funny how that works, right? Funny how your morals only matter when you're indoctrinating Western children. Mm -hmm. But if it's a faux pas against China, then it's a different story. Look then you, then you have to appease that. them and their values. Yep. Like that just shows how inhuman and unprincipled they really are. But when it comes to indoctrinating our children, then, then they'll be militant about their values with all this stuff whether it's this whether it's the grammys i just keep coming back to the idea that look we need to focus on they're going to keep making what they're going to make we need to either make parallel a parallel economy where you're making your own stuff where you can offer a, a good alternative and there are plenty of you know new artists and things that are doing that now but also be wary of what your kids are watching what you're allowing them to view on their tablet and that's really all you can do when companies get to this size and they're, they've just 
push this far into the economy yeah. on every level. And try to give your kids an alternative, right? Exactly. Like, instead of setting yep. up with tablets, set them up with crayons. I know it's hard for a lot of parents. <laughs> Absolutely. You can be exhausted and really want something that'll capture their attention, but ultimately, yep. like, decreasing dependence on visual entertainment I agree. Takes away power from Disney and other corporations it, like it. And it makes me sad because so much of this stuff meant so much to me when mm -hmm. I was growing up. And then to see what it's become is just, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.